Thank you for joining us at Servant Crafts today. My name is Carla, and we'll be working on a felt stocking kit by Busia called Santa's Sleigh. I hope that as we work through this, you'll get some new ideas, possibly some techniques that'll simplify or make your craft a little bit easier to complete. So let's get started. All right, we're going to begin here with white sequins. Whoops, there we go. White sequins. So I'm going to select a bead and sequin needle here. Remember, I organized this with uh, embroidery needles on the side, pins to anchor things when necessary in the middle, dividing them, and then bead and uh, sequin and bead needles which are very thin and have um, an eye that is narrow enough to go through the bead so when you're going to do sequins and beads you are always going to pull off just one strand of floss and separate that out And I always put my floss immediately back on my floss organizer because otherwise I will make a mess. And thread, oh I have some lipstick on. Okay, thread your sequin and bead needle, which can be a challenge. There are um, lots of items available to assist you with threading needles if that is a challenge and most of the time it's not too much of a challenge for me but occasionally I get one that just doesn't want to cooperate there we go and in the case of sequins and beads you are going to double this floss so you're going to bring the two ends together and make your knot there. I always trim off that if there's any tail. I don't want that sticking out on the inside of my work. And pull that together. So you can see you have got a needle threaded and it's one strand, but it's got two threads for you to use. So here are my white and here are the, um, the beads. So um, I'm very cautious about how far I let a string travel on the inside of the stocking because I want these stockings to be usable. Certainly the stockings that we have for our children have been used for many years and we definitely put candy and oranges and little gifts down inside there. And so I always make sure that I only travel, only let a thread travel no more than the width of my thumb because I don't want something to get caught in there and to pull it. In fact, I might not even let it travel that far. So these up here that are separate, I'm going to do one and then um, tie it off. So needle goes through this, the dot where you're looking for. I moisten my finger to pick up the sequins because they're difficult to pick up. Slide that on your needle and then I hold it down and pull it through. Then I'm going to go to my beads and pick up, pick up a clear bead here. Sometimes that's easier said than done. Get one bead on that needle, go back through and pull it tight. And because my next one is over here and I feel that that's too far, 
I'm going to knot this one off with my two knots that I usually use. <coughs> tight because loose sequins and beads um, will have a tendency to get pulled off so if you can keep them tight and secure that will have them remain there remain securely anchored for many years and trim it off now I need another knot okay now you can see <clears throat> I finished all of the white sequins on the top. These again are going to be ones that I'm going to um, do and cut off uh, individually. I'm not going to do them and drag the string across because as you'll see, the back of your work should be almost as nice and neat as the front of your work. It's it's just a mark of uh, good craftsmanship to do that. Apply. The green sequins have all been applied to the bottom, the white to the top, and we're ready to start cutting out our next piece. Our next piece should be piece number two. The, the base of the stocking is almost always piece one. But again, keep track of your um, progress and watch your instructions closely. Just one little note, I always put my sequins in so that they're like a dish shape, so they're curved upward. That helps them to reflect the light and be more sparkly. Um, the first probably four, three, four stockings I made, I put them on the other way and then um, I saw someone else's stocking and saw that I was doing it wrong. So um, just a heads up, no worries. If that's how you've started, you can always switch um, or just keep going that same way. Either way, it's still beautiful, but um, just something I didn't know in the beginning. This is piece number two right here. Um, you can see it's the little pom-pom that's gonna go on Santa's hat. When I'm cutting pieces away, you want to be very careful that you don't cut into another piece. They can be laid out very closely. And when I cut out this piece, number two, I'm gonna make sure I take the number two with me um, so that it isn't confusing later. Like, is that number two part of this or is that number two part of that? Um, always take the number that the piece is and make sure that it's with you when you cut it out. Um, and what I may do in this piece and what I did in the green piece is I will probably cut, um, cut off the pieces that are attached to this so that they're, I'm not um, working or manipulating this back of this, this is the back of the stocking. Um, as much as if I grabbed it every time. So I am going to cut away those uh, the extra pieces around the edge, um, making sure always that the numbers are with them and um, so that I, I don't. Uh, felt can sometimes be um, uh, thin. It's not, it's not a woven fabric. Um, it's just fibers that are kind of, um, randomly and <laughs> smashed for lack of a better word it's not woven like a fabric would be with threads going this way and threads going that way um, so it's not as strong whoops want to make sure i don't lose my number two um, so i'm always very careful with felt um, because of that because it doesn't hold up so I am going, and also the back of this stocking is pure white. So I also don't want anything to make it dirty. Um, so you can see I'm not actually cutting out the back of the stocking. I am just simply cutting away the pieces that we will use to make the stocking and then putting them in my um, pile of pieces. And then generally what I do with this back of the stocking 
is I take it and fold it up and put it back in the plastic that the kit came in. Um, again, protecting it and uh, keeping it clean. But I see that I think I threw away the, the bag that the stocking came in, the plastic. So I think I'll go get myself a Ziploc bag or something to put that in. So now we're going to cut. Cutting, um, again, the, the sharp pointy scissors are so important. And I cut just inside of the line. And I try to be so careful. Very small cuts, especially many of these are round. Um, you just have to work your way around. And again, they don't have to be perfect when they're part of the whole. Uh, everything that wasn't exactly perfect just seems to blend in, make it look um, like it was made by hand. And um, they, they do seem to just, just blend themselves away. After I get this cut out, I will look at the piece very carefully going around, especially because it's white. I don't want any of that little black edge still attached. So, so you can see that there, there's a little bit there. And I just trim that, get that off. There's a little bit right there. And it's usually just the very edge. It's not even the whole piece. So there that is. And those dots indicate that we are going to put, um, and we'll double check that here on my instructions, it says to sequin, stuff, and applique the pom-pom to the stocking front. So the sequins that are going to go on that, it shows me here, are white. And generally speaking, the sequins usually match the color of the piece. And again, this is going to be so much easier because I can just go ch -ch 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 all the way around there. I won't make that noise. You can see the piece is finished as far as the sequence. There's nothing else to do on that piece. But it is going to go right here since it's number two. It's going to go right here and it will cover over in all cases your goal is is to cover over the lines that are on your pattern and you want to line up these lines indication these lines that indicate um, here you want to make sure they line up with what's coming out here on the pattern now it asks you to stuff this piece and I will tell you, I keep just this little wad of stuffing in my <clears throat> box. And it takes very little stuffing uh, to make these uh, puff up like they do. So I just wad up a little bit, stick it back behind there. I need to get it lined up perfectly again. And once I do, that's where I come in with a pin and make sure that it stays so that when I sew it down um, it'll be in the place where we want it. Now I have threaded an embroidery needle with a single strand of white floss. You can see that I do not have the floss doubled. It's a single strand and I'm going to work with a single strand. So I've only knotted the single strand end there. And then um, I'm just going to go around and simply hand stitch, trying to keep my stitches pretty even, um, making sure that everything, like I have a little knot right here from my sequin, I want to make sure I get that tucked under there. And again, the sequins, you just get used to them catching on things. Just ducking either in between or just under the sequins here. I 
And this piece actually, you can see, goes out over the edge of the stocking. You will have pieces like that occasionally. They help to add kind of just a little depth to your stocking or to your project. So I like to come here <coughs> on the back and just tack them down here on the back until I get to where I see that stuffing is trying to come out. And then I get back to where I can continue to attach it to the stocking. All right, you can see that piece number three is the top of Santa's hat, and I have cut that out already. And the dots indicate that it's gonna be lined with sequins. We'll double check, but they'll probably are red. But this solid line right here indicates some embroidery. So we need to go to the pattern directions and see here what it's indicating. So you look at the picture and it shows us this uh, black and white line. Then we go to the key and this black and white line, it says right here is an outline stitch done with two strands of burgundy floss. And that's going to begin right here. You can see right at the end of that line. And I have to be careful with felt, again, because it's not a woven fabric, that you're not too close to the edge. It's really easy to pull your thread right through. And then I'm gonna go in, tiny stitches, and out right on the line. for a two strand thread and to do a black satin stitch to fill in the section in the eye. Then we're gonna put just a little white um, French knot right there. But when you're doing something that's round, it's recommended that you start in the center and work to one side and then come back and work to the other. You have to try to put your stitches as close together.
here is the Santa sleigh stocking. As you can see off camera, I did the three candy canes, packages, and a drum. How many thousands of stitches there are in just one inch stocking? The back is not applied yet, but the stocking will be available there. I'm ready to be applied, but I will have a space here to personalize it. This is it. Then I will put the back on. Ready to send. Put over so you can see. The back doesn't have anything long or that would catch. I wanted to use this to put things inside of it. Like I said, for over 30 years, uh, many of my kids were stocking. Let me see if I can give you some close-up on some of the parts here. Santa. There you have it. The stocking will be available for purchase at our Etsy shop. Feel free to click on the link in the description over there and see what we've got available. If you like and subscribe, we'd love to have you join us and keep on with all of our crafts and projects. Thanks for being with us and God bless you.